Welcome back to the Umbulgari track. Oh my goodness. Right now, we're five days into a massive Kimberley adventure as we try to open up one of Australia's most remote four-wheel drive destinations. I think this is tyre number nine. This is something we can't fix. We're in a bit of a pickle right now. That's me out of the game. I have zero tyres left. This is a wild place to travel at the best of times, but after a massive wet season, the track has virtually disappeared. And right now, it's nearly got the best of us. Tune in and see what happens, because at the moment, I don't even know if we're getting out of here. Our journey began just 50 kilometres to the south, as we set out with Ronnie to re-establish the Umbulgari track, which hasn't seen a vehicle in nearly two years. Something goes wrong here. Let me just this is as sketchy as it gets. Already we've tackled the fast-flowing, boulder-filled Durack River. We've pushed through miles of grass taller than our four-wheel drives, camped by an inland ocean and caught metre-plus barra, punctured tyres and broken vehicles. And that brings us to our current predicament. After days pushing in the track at the front of the convoy, Ronnie has had a breakage. It could spell disaster for our plans. Well, as you may remember, we're currently trackside right now with a bit of a nasty repair on our hands. We haven't even really started this track, to be honest. We've got such a long way to go. We've got the biggest challenges coming up. Looks to us like Ronnie might be in two-wheel drive for the rest of this trip. We'll see how we go with that. But he's done a uni and a yoke, so there's not much we can do to fix that. For us, though, so it means some of the biggest challenges of this trip are going to be done with a leader in two-wheel drive. How are we going to go? I don't know. Why don't you sit back, relax, and see what happens? Because I'm as interested as you to find out. Sometimes, you know, the best camps are the unexpected ones. And soon we've got a fire cranking, beers on the go, and a great feed sizzling on the hot plate. Our camp for tonight is just over halfway to the ruins of the town of Umbulgari, which has been our first objective of the trip. But the track to Umbulgari is just a fraction of the length of the journey ahead, and we still have to cross the top of the Kimberley to finish it off. With marshes, mudflats, hills, and forests to tackle along the way, We've no idea at this point what the challenges are that lie ahead. But I can tell you that this is exactly the kind of adventure we live for. We can't wait to get going. There we go, Ron. You're in two-wheel drive, mate, and um, blazing the way forward. Yeah, mate. Um, a lot has changed. It kind of changed up my uh, angle of attacking some of these uh, big river crossings and muddy holes. But um, nah, with you guys there, I got a lot of confidence we'll, um, we'll do it, not relatively with ease, but um, <laughs> yeah, we'll do it. <laughs> and Rocket, mate, towing that trailer, you've uh, got a couple of little mechanical issues yourself, the front locker and, and all the rest of it, but um, you've been trucking pretty good, considering. I've got a front diff lock jammed on, so I have to unlock my hubs until I need them. I'm blowing a little bit of smoke, so I'm suspected that my turbo's gone a little bit left. Well, mate, I, I love the fact that you still say that with a smile, mate, because most people, they'll be stressed out at this point in time. We've still got about 500 k's of off-road to do. Well, let's get going, boys. We've got a fair few challenges today, I think. Now, I mentioned before that a big wet season can almost obliterate the track, but this time it's even worse, as it's been two wet seasons since Ronnie last came through with the tour. The problem now is that the grass has grown unchecked for nearly two years and is so thick the track is often impossible to make out, even for Ronnie, who knows this place like the back of his hand. <laughs> Far out. Grass as high as a dirty 30, and you're just trying to follow your nose. There's a big stump, don't you, at that? Let me know how you go, but I think that might be a bit boggy up there too. The real issue is not the grass, but what it's hiding. Soon enough, Sean's in trouble. Ronnie was just on the radio, he said, just look out for potholes, and uh, found one, found a massive one. The coal car just went bulls straight on the side. I wonder if I can go forward. If not, I'll have to get recovered backwards, I think. It's just a hole there. Oh, yeah. It just won't climb up because it's like a vertical wall. It's like exactly a dirty 30 sort of hole where it's just falling into. We can't really go back, it's all wet under here. Sean has a go at powering his way out forward, but the 30 simply isn't going anywhere. Just found a little tree. We're trying to get Ronnie around to me, but there's another big hole over there we just found in the grass because we walked it first. 
So I think I'm just gonna go off the tree so I can get a straight line pull. I don't wanna pull into the bank because it's already on an angle and pulling into the bank is gonna make it worse before it gets better. So we're just gonna run it straight up there. I'm gonna get a bit of recovery gear. 600 k's of this to go. That tree position is almost too good to be true. And sure enough, it's not holding. Well, we just tried to winch up the front here, the tree, but this ground is just like super moist, super muddy, so that just had no root structure. So unless we can get Ronnie in a better position, difficult, because he's got to come across his drainage channel as well. He's only in two-wheel drive. We may have to bring him out backwards. This is harder ground here. Let's see how we go. Be a fair old winch, but I think at this stage, it might be our best bet. See how we go. As Sean mentioned, a rear recovery could mean denting up the passenger panels. So we're positioning the D-Max off to the left to try and pull the vehicle away from the bank. All right, mate, here we go. Yeah. Straighten up, left hand down, mate, left hand down. Now, that boat right there is stuck. Don't spin the wheels too much, just slow it down a bit. Drive, 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 drive. Right hand down, right hand down. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Hey! <laughs> yeah. That's the type of hole I was telling you about. <laughs> just, I literally just said it, eh? Hey. I was like, yeah, mate, no worries. Booze. <laughs> I'm like, see ya. <laughs> this place is wild. <laughs> well, there's no doubt that this long grass now seems a bit more treacherous. Thankfully, on this occasion, we found another route around the creek and the rest of us can follow through unscathed. Now, when the Ormby track isn't lost in the undergrowth or crossing massive rivers, it's thrown out these big rocky climbs, filled with tire shredding rocks and plenty of diff bangers. It still blows my mind to think that once, this was the main road into the township of Umbulgari, a route that locals could complete in less than half a day. And I, for one, can't wait to head back and see what remains of the place. We are getting really close now to getting into the old town side of Wumbi. I reckon nature's going to have reclaimed a lot six years ago since I've seen it. But, of course, I've also seen Wumbi as a thriving community. It was a magnificent place to stay for a few days. Went fishing with the locals. It was awesome. It's got a bit of a special place in my heart. Even though the town site's not there anymore, it's a bit of a ghost town now. Getting back to Umbi for me, even though I don't get there very often, it's so far away, so super remote, it just, it feels awesome to go back. It's got a real special place in my heart. The whole track does, the whole area does, and Umbi in particular. The rocks and hidden branches along the track are continuing to cause issues with tyres, and I'm the next victim. Well, this is a little disconcerting. We've done two tyres in five minutes and about 100 metres and four tyres in the last 24 hours. We're about a quarter of the way through the trip. Uh, we've got a lot of rocky, sort of open, stony country to come to. This hasn't been rough enough. Some of the northern sections are really stony, so it doesn't get any easier on tyres anyway. Little bit concerned, but not overly concerned. I can't see anything big on this one here, so I've got everything crossed, fingers, toes, and well, if I could cross anything else, I would, that we can put a plug in this bad boy. So we'll see how we go. We'll give it to Sean. He is the master of plugging small holes. I've seen him do it before. Um, so we'll give it to him and see how we go with it. But for now, We'll get him off and get going. In the background, Graham's changed that tyre. Thought I'd give this a go. Just trying to plug it up. It doesn't look too bad. It's probably like about an inch sort of slashing that side wall. Look, you can do this to get yourself out of strife in the bush, but obviously when you get back to a main road, you know, try and sort it out properly. This will get us out of strife for now. It might take about four or five plugs. After a bit of time on the tools, Ronnie's found the perfect place for us to cool off. A stunning little water hole off the side of the track. It's a good spot to drop a line, and even better, Ronnie reckons it's safe for swimming. With daytime temperatures averaging in the high 30s, we're not going to argue with that. <laughs> How good is this? Yeah, so we've been here for about five minutes, and Sean thinks he's 
you know, the fisherman of the trip, but clearly, clearly, he's been outdone. After a bit of a freshen up, it's time to line up for our next big river crossing. This would have to be the final obstacle, wouldn't it? Before we oh, <laughs> get into Umbi? Yeah, you know it, brother. This is the uh, last big obstacle anyway. Uh, the Gila Crossing. Yeah, the water looks pretty high from where I am, mate. Well, this little piece of real estate right here is the Forest River coming through here, and this is called the Gila Crossing right here. It's probably the last major obstacle we've got before getting, believe it or not, up the top of that hill there <laughs> and across it into Umbulgaria, which is still quite some distance off. When I last did this with Sean Oat, there was a puddle of water in this. We hardly got our tyres wet. The first time I did it, water was well over the bonnet of Shorty going through this. And it looks to be about the same depth today, so don't know. One thing I don't like about this crossing is that we do have to walk it. You have to find out where the holes are in it, and there are saltwater crocs in this river. So it's just one of those situations where you just got to suck it up and get it done, really. Ronnie's soon sizing up the start of the crossing, but even he's not keen to stick around. And that's what makes crossings like this so sketchy. You really are driving into the unknown. Mate, who's going through this first? Well, I reckon Ronnie. <laughs> but Ronnie's in two-wheel drive. And he pointed at me as well. So. You're in four-wheel drive. I, I just, it's such a long river crossing. Yeah, it's two parts too. <laughs> yeah, you you pause got, in the middle for a cup goes, of tea. Yeah, over there, over there. It's about a 300 metre crossing. It is, it's a donkey thing. When you get across, he's had to look for a sandy exit. And that's where I'm worried because I can't right. see an exit. It just looks like a escarpment over there. Could be there. chocolate brown by the time you get there, mate. I reckon. <laughs> I reckon you two go in together. Why are you stopping there and not going any further? That makes me nervous. <laughs> Have you seen the deep part? Oh, is that the deep part there? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll give it a go. Let's, Let's do this. All right, that's hooked up there. Just getting a bit of recovery gear attached to the vehicle. So if this is underwater, we need to go backwards. We can easily just grab that. We know it's attached to the vehicle. And we have to be looking around underwater for, you know, uh, where to tie it off to. So. Which is ready as well. I've got in-cab controls for that. I'm going to take the lead on this one. Let's get past Ronnie and because uh, I've got four-wheel drive, I'm just going to have a go at it and um, we'll see what happens. Hopefully it's not too deep. Here we go. Oh my goodness. This is going to be deep, isn't it? Yeah, it's deep. It's deep. It's proper deep. Let's chuck that lock, that rear locker Keep on. Straight for that rock there, brother. <laughs> boat. Oh my goodness! Got some deep little holes in here, doesn't it? Yeah, mate. She's bloody slippery too, eh? Hey? This is a bad time to be asking, mate. But where's the exit? Just peel off right there, bro. Keep that uh, tree on your right. Keep that on your right. The water on either side of the crossing gets very deep very quickly. So it pays to follow Ronnie's directions to the letter. And thankfully, the boys are through unscathed. Oh, man. Two wheel drive through that. Woo! You got bigger kahunas than me, mate. What do you reckon? We'll uh, call the other guys over, or...? Yeah, no, we'll just go barra fishing, mate. Up to you. <laughs> Seeing the first two rigs get through has definitely bolstered the confidence for the rest of the crew. But I reckon this is still going to feel pretty deep in a slightly smaller vehicle. The D-Max though, well, it just eats up the crossing. Oh, ah! <laughs> oh this is intense. <laughs> that is awesome. Whoa, she's deep here. Really deep. Oh, 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 oh. Mate, the big old kills it, eh? She That's does. So she just sits there, just burbling her way. She's got just enough weight, I think, to anchor her down. Last man across the crossing is Jesse, and his main concern is probably just not floating away in his lightweight jewel cab. Just like that, though, everyone is through, and Umbulgari is one step closer. Ronnie 
is having a drive like a man possessed to convince the big 79 to climb up in rear wheel drive only. Third time's a charm. All right, let's see how we go here. Rockets giving it the berries, but that's six tonne of rig right there, and it's just a bit too much to ask. No, I'm gonna have to winch up. Well, that's exactly why you wheel with mates. Tim soon lined up as the anchor point. No rocket rod, I will be here to support you. And support you well. You're going to need to. You've got six and a half tonnes about to haul off the back of you. When you see this climb under winch, it's suddenly looking very soft. This is one of the more extreme places you'd ever take a camper. But Rocket's got a good technique going here, not letting his tyres spin too quickly and using the auto to control the climb. I'm almost at the point where I can get some traction. I'm also trying desperately not to break any axles or anything as well. All the winch. That's a big balance job when you're doing these big winches. And the poor big girl is putting in a massive fight. Almost there, the winch rope is starting to go slack. That was a big winch. That was huge. After a few more hours of low range crawling, Ronnie's found us a spot on the edge of the township near the old runway. We've taken the Maverick Ranger on a number of trips now and something that makes it unique is how quickly it sets up. You literally flip the lid, push up a couple of poles to extend and keep the canvas taut and you're all set up. It really is faster than rolling out your swag. When you're moving camp every single day, that really does make all the difference. Now, Umbi is just down here. Can't wait to go and check it out tomorrow morning. But for now, because we're so early in the season, everywhere is overgrown with grass. That'll all fade and die away as the summer months approach. But for now, we've chosen a nice little clearing here. Tomorrow morning, we'll head in, say good day to Umbi, but I think we get a couple of steaks on the barbie, a couple of iron jacks. I'm knackered. That's a solid 12 hours on the tracks. Some big obstacles done. Stoked to be in camp. After five days and 90 k's of intense driving, it feels like a massive achievement to have finally made it to Umbulgari. Yeah, I tell you, this really is an adventure and a half, and we can't wait to see what tomorrow brings. Coming up, we head deeper into the Kimberley. The conditions just get wetter and wilder, and along the way, we'll lose our guide, we'll lose the track, run out of tyres, and try to push through to one of the best campsites in all of Australia. In the light of morning, we can see for the first time the airstrip that served Umbulgari in its heyday, and in the distance the rooftops of what's left of the town itself. Before we head into town, we've got a few things to sort out though, including a quick brekkie on the camper and a refuel. Now, we've budgeted a lot of diesel for this trip and we've got between 150 to 200 litres per vehicle with us. But even we've been caught out by the rate we're consuming it. And Ronnie's actually made the call to head back and pick up some more fuel. Meanwhile, Rocket's investigating a few dramas under the big auto. Obviously over the last few days, copped a bit of punishment especially in the boulder fields and especially the big river crossings that had the big rocks in. I've noticed I've got a bent steering arm, which is the link arm from left to right. I've got a turbo that's not only externally leaking, but internally leaking as well, which is where all the smoke's coming from. And I'm still trying to chase down a couple of knocks and rattles at the back somewhere. So I'm gradually moving down to car to see if I can find any of the faults. The steering arm we're gonna leave, just to try and straighten, it's gonna obviously weaken it. So we'll get through it all and then I'll probably just do a, a wheel alignment and then just drive with a bent arm to get her home. With all the checks done, it's finally time to visit the township. And just like we remembered last time, the main street is lined with Boabs. But everything else couldn't be more different. Seven years ago, this was a living, breathing community with shops, a school, a clinic, a police station and much more. 
But in 2014, the government decided Umbulgari had to go. First, they closed the shops, then the clinic, then the school, and those that still tried to stay on were given just 48 hours to leave. So people literally up and left, leaving behind their possessions and homes. Now, all that's left is the wildlife and a lot of memories. Look at this place. I can't believe how much change this had in six years. Yeah, after so long not being on the track, it's um, yeah, very overgrown. It's just crazy for me to be driving through here, having stayed for a few days in this community when it was a thriving, thriving town. I mean, this was lined with houses through here. Kids running everywhere, mums with prams, dads going to work. Blows my mind. I'm glad I got to see it in its heyday. I really am, but it's. Sad to see it today. I've got to tell you, Ronnie, it actually makes me feel a little bit emotional and a little sad to see it in the state that it is. Yeah, mate, I do have those feelings about being emotional and, you know, in a sorry state. But, uh, you know, we've always got to try and keep positive and um, always look to the future, you know. What was, um, you know, will be and um, just look towards the future and see what we can do for the people and, you know, uh, come back out onto country. Ronnie's got a lot of memories to share of this place. After all, this was the town that he and his family grew up in, in a house built by his great-grandfather when Umbi was a mission. And the old place is still standing today. Well, real privilege to uh, be able to come back and have a look at the old place with, with Ron and hear the old stories and see his brothers and sisters graffiti on the old cupboard there. Of course, Ron, like he said, he's a good boy. He didn't write his name anywhere. I'm suggesting if I look hard enough, I'll find it somewhere. I reckon if we swept this out, She'd be good to go. We could camp in here, but we can't. We've got to keep moving. Ronnie, thanks so much, bro. I really do hope that the history of Umbulgari isn't over yet, and it's been a privilege to hear the stories from Ronnie about its past. But of course, this also marks the point where we're going to part ways, as Ronnie tries to push back along the track that we've taken to get him back to civilization and some repairs. Well, Ronnie, big thanks, mate, for taking us this far. Oh, it's been awesome so far. Yeah, no worries, mate. This is where I turn off, head back. I think you guys will be fine. I've got so much faith and confidence in you, and you got a lot of a lot of ways to find the track, buddy. Yeah, cool, mate. Oh, well, fingers crossed, mate. We catch up in a few days. Yeah, definitely, mate. I'll see you at the Berkeley. The plan now for the rest of us is to push on as best we can to another big river in the far north of the track, the Berkeley, which represents the halfway point of the track. Meanwhile, Ronnie will stock up on spare fuel and come in from the north via the Gibb River Road and the Columba Roo Road to meet us at the top end. For us, the first challenge is right outside town. The salt plains north of Wumbi are still flooded and we're going to have to try and trace an old fishing track to bypass them. Ronnie's given us a rough idea of where to find it, but staying on track without a guide is going to be a real challenge. The adventure folks just got cranked up a notch. Soon we're tracing our way between seasonal wetlands and creeks, and just as expected, the track soon disappears back into the long grass. From what we can tell, mate, the track just goes straight into this thick stuff. Um, looks very wet down here is my only concern. Yeah, well, there's a big water sort of body over to our left there, mate, so I'm guessing at this time of year she's still probably getting fed from this little area we're going into. I might give you a little bit of space just in case. Good news is there'd be no crocs in here, mate. This doesn't feel right at all. As quickly as that track comes, it goes. This section of track was clearly a locals only route and it doesn't appear on any maps. So we're quite literally following our noses and trying to link back with the main track about 25 k's ahead. Soon enough, another river blocks the path. Well, there's not much of a track, but we can see what looks to be a few old wheel ruts. So we're feeling hopeful. I reckon this particular track here just doesn't get used by virtue of the fact they're calling this the wet season track. Now, the majority of people when they come up here for the wet season don't need to go north. You wouldn't get north anyway. So you probably wouldn't use this except maybe in the old times and they were going back and forth between the little communities up there. 
I don't reckon this has been driven in since Umbi closed, for sure. So we're kind of feeling our way through. I can see you come through here, up onto this bank, and then across there, could be the crossing. Only one way we're gonna find out, send in our guinea pig, our resident guinea pig. This is sketchy. I don't wanna get stuck in here. Sean's through without too much trouble and straight back into the long grass. I'm also able to cross without much drama, but that exit is getting chewed up. A little pointy up a hill, can do. It's good, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. Ah, they're hanging around in there. <laughs> Sorry, just chewing my tongue. Up we go through. All right, I'm up. The line, big boy, go hard. Whoa, really sunk down in. Hope that camper follows me. What corner, Rocky? What corner? I don't think I can do this one. I'll try it again. I can't move. I don't know why. Yeah, your back rocker's not working. Come and save me. I got you, baby. <laughs> Rocket's been having rear locker trouble this whole trip, and it's definitely adding to the challenge in the softer stuff. I've done a lot of tracks. I've seen a lot of tracks done with campers. I've done a lot of tracks with campers, but I've never seen a single track so demanding. If you ever wanted to test a camper, this is the place to test it. Yep, this is one heck of a place to go wheeling. Middle of nowhere, off the map, on tracks that haven't been driven in years. If that doesn't get your blood pumping, well, I suggest you check your pulse. And with a bit of help from the Mitz boys, rockets out of the mud. That's all they needed. A couple of more inches. Just like anybody else. That's <laughs> all any man ever needs. Jesse's well set up for challenges like this, but he's got to deal with the aftermath of rockets run. Rocket. My goodness. I cannot have you spoilt, young man. I just, I left you a bit of a surprise. Did you like it? It was definitely floppy. <laughs> Look at that. Maverick wanted us to push the Ranger camper to its limit. And well, rockets delivering. What a weapon. After plenty of Ks of track pushing and a few more tyres down, we've made it back to the northern end of the Salt Flats and some of the most open country we've seen in days. Well, how's that, mate? Out of that thick grass onto a big open plain, this feels a lot better. Had a bit of a uh, odd Lorella Springs type feel about it in there, mate. I wonder if we're ever going to get out of there. Look, mate, if someone told me like a few weeks ago, you'll be pushing tracks through in your brand new Dirty 30, I would have said, Haha, not a chance, mate. It feels good to stretch the legs a bit, and we can see the edges of the old track around the wetlands. But soon we're back into the deep stuff and crawling the Forbies towards a couple of dips in the distant hills that Ronnie told us to aim for. I'm driving through this grass for what feels like days now. It's sort of claustrophobic. It almost feels like you're a bit kind of underwater. They've had some massive rainfalls across Australia during the wet season this year. 
This northern section of the Kimberley got record rains, combined with the fact that this area here hasn't been driven for nearly two years. That's why you're seeing all this. Masses of grass. The grass would still be here even if it had been driven, but this track would have been pushed through last year and it wouldn't be nearly as bad. So we really are pushing new ground in some pretty gnarly conditions. Loving it. As we climb up off the plains, the old track becomes a bit easier to follow with some defined rock edging where old maintenance crews piled up rocks off the side of the track. Still, I think you'll agree, it's not exactly a highway. Have a go at this hill climb. It's just, you know, football sized boulders that are super sharp. One of the last things you want on these sort of track is to spin the tyres heaps. Spinning the tyres fast will, you know, you'll lose traction, but more importantly, you know, Bigger chance of cutting those sidewalls apart. Yeah, Rocket, this is going to be tough telling a trailer mate through up here. Ah, oh, well, what do you do? Give it a fair crack and we'll see what happens, eh? Goodness gracious me. Come on, Graham, talk to us in the heat of battle. Tell us what's going on, mate. <laughs> I can't! I got two hands on the wheel, mate! <laughs> Alright. Oh. My room all day, mate. You'll hop straight up that thing. This is a tough one. Come down a little bit. Not sure if I can get going from here. I'm going to leave it there, mate. I'm just going to smash things to pieces if I keep on persisting here. And I'll lock it back in again. Yep, like Steeper, what? Six tonnes, steep uphill. It never looks like it's steep. Not on camera anyway, but I can assure you that it's actually very steep. After a bit of rock packing, rockets on the winch. And you can see here just how little traction is on offer. Make no mistake, this is a big winch. Soon enough, he's back under his own steam. Oh my lord, what an effort that was. <laughs> Thanks Tim. Thanks Harry. I needed that greatly. Rockets left a few holes for Jesse to navigate, but this boy's got a calm way of wheeling. He just seems to take it all in his stride. Well done, mate. That was textbook. Between us and the Berkeley River lies a series of valleys, creeks and ranges, and with half the challenge just finding the remains of the track, we don't exactly rack up the miles. Frequently, we follow what we think is the path, only to have to backtrack and try again. And every mistake costs us extra hours. With deep growth around the creeks, entries and exits are a bit of a lottery. And of course, they're a heck of a lot of fun. Soon we're settling into something of a daily routine. Driving until we run out of light, then parking up at perfect campsite after perfect campsite. In the morning, we're back up at first light, aiming to push a few more Ks through this stunning part of the world. Every crossing's an adventure. Every glimmer of track is exciting. And soon, three more days has passed with long hours behind the wheel. The Mitz boys have proven to be pretty adept at track spotting and have been taking the lead following a GPS mark for the original track. Of course, the route changes every season and fixed maps quickly go out of date, but it's keeping us in roughly the right direction. This is unbelievable. Like, everyone at home is just gonna watch it and go, nah, you, the boys are just driving through a bit of long grass. So we've done 240 k's in nine days. And I swear to God, in the last two days, we've done 36. It's just been like this, like, have a look. Without a doubt, this is the most insane trip I've ever been on. <laughs> Fire hardened stumps like this are causing mayhem in the convoy and there's barely a vehicle in the convoy that hasn't lost tyres. 
Sean's soon onto a spare as his rocket, and while we're plugging tyres where we can, many are unrepairable. You can't see what's going on. We've got like, sort of a six to eight foot bamboo grass everywhere. You sort of got to follow your nose a little bit. Problem is you just don't see these little hidden things down in the ground here. So if you look here, check this out. I ran over this, it's, it's just facing straight back towards the tyre. Have a go at that, eh? It snapped straight in there, took the whole side wall out of the tyre. It's happening every single vehicle. And it's not being brand specific on tyres, it's just you drive in the wrong spot and um, get it millimetre wrong, you'll get a flat like this. And soon, I'm also in strife. Well, I've just done another tyre, front left. Problem is, this is my last tyre. Have a look at the repair job in that. I just don't know how far that's gonna get me. And once this one's gone, I'm out of tyres. While the Berkeley is our next big objective, there's a destination along the way that Sean, Rocket and myself are hanging out to get to. It's called Paradise, and when you see it, you'll understand. And four days out of Umbulgari, it looks like we've found the place at last. Copy, Sean, eh? Yeah, gotcha, mate. Gotcha. Mate, I'm frothing like a dog that's just ate a tub of soap. This is the exact spot I've been looking forward to the whole trip. Yeah, me too, mate. If we can find it, it shouldn't be too far around here. I can see a pandanus down there, which is giving me pretty high hopes. Paradise, mate. This place took my breath away last time we are here. Unfortunately, we're under the pump for time. Hopefully today we can spend a bit more time down here, mate. Yeah, I'm thinking, you know, we don't do this very often, but pulling to camp early, it's been like, what, four days blazing this track. So, yeah, I wouldn't mind just, you know, setting camp up a bit earlier, maybe cooking a feed, all that sort of stuff, catching a fish. Sounds like a perfect day in my books. If you're gonna park up for a day in the middle of the Kimberley, you can't do much better than this. Fresh water, river full of fish, and a waterfall to boot. I mean, come on, does it get any better? There's even a friendly local here to greet us. This stretch of water is chock full of sooty grunter, and practically every cast comes back with a fish. Not a bad reward after so many days on the track. That's pretty cool. Woo! This is fishing like you, you see in the movies. Every cast you get in a nice sooty like that. Absolutely sensational. In fact, I'm thinking this one here's got lunch written on it. What a little ripper. Paradise. Stay here for a day, no problems at all. Well, I just went down to the a little bit of paradise down there. Caught a couple of sooties and um, they're gonna be lunch. So the cool thing about having a trailer, of course, you can just, when Rocket's not looking anyway, grab the kitchen out, set it up in about two seconds, cook some lunch before anyone notices, and simple as that. One of the ways I like to cook fish, just the most simple way known to me, a bit of salt and pepper, a bit of butter in a hot pan, you cannot go wrong, and just, Look at that. When that gets nice and hot, I'll just put those fillets straight in. I've already given them a little bit of salt and pepper in there, and they are going to taste absolutely unreal. I might put them in a wrap. I don't know. Maybe just eat them with a fork. Such a luxury to have a camper trailer on a trip like this. I mean, it's got so many features that become so handy when you're out in the bush and you're doing it quite remote. We've got a full 12 volt system with the Manager 30 Plus. We've got the Red Vision. That powers up by a couple of batteries. A fridge freezer, so we've got a 90 litre fridge freezer. You've also got all your lights, you've got heaps of storage. It's just a great little thing to take camping with you on a place like this, because you're so remote, you've got over 100 litres of water. It just becomes the central part of every campsite that we've had on this trip. And you know what? When fish start sizzling on a pan like this, that noise will attract the rest of the mob from absolutely miles away. It's starting to smell so good. After a week of long days driving, it's an absolute treat to pull into camp early. And soon we're all set up and ready to make the most of our time here. I don't know if it's the hard yards to get here or just the location itself, but this place is just so special. Well, tell you what, this camp, 
I'm going to die. I say it all the time, but I'm going to say it this time. This is going to be one of the best camps I've ever been to in my life. And I'm going to put it to you folks right now at home. If you can think of a better campsite anywhere in Australia that beats this one, put it in the comments down below. Sean and I will head there and we'll suss it out for ourselves and tell you if you're right. Because this one right here, as far as I'm concerned, one of the best campsites I've ever been to. Time for a beer. How do you top off a perfect day? <laughs> well, you guessed it, with a cold one and a view. This really is magical. This is one of not only the highlight of the last few days, but one of the highlights of my life to be sitting right here. I was going to say, this is Kimberley. how privileged are we right now? We've got a sunset happening here, we've got a freshie down here, a couple of cold beers, good mates. The only one thing to make it better. Look, I know you, you're jamming me up, mate. You've been wanting to taste one of my culinary delights for some time now, mate, and tonight mm. is your lucky night. It's not what I was thinking at all. I was just thinking <laughs> another beer, actually. That's what I was thinking, mate. Well, mate, all I can say is tonight, yep. fellas, it's your lucky night because I'm gonna cook something absolutely mean. It's gonna make my baduri change shape. It's gonna be that really? Cool. Yeah, big time. I'm gonna have one more beer and warm up to it and uh, right. think about a recipe quickly. How much? We'll get right into it. How much toilet paper you got? Because <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling we're gonna need it. Cheers, boys. Cheers, fellas. All right, folks, get ready. sean has got that look in his eye, and I reckon tonight, this recipe might just get a bit loose. Well, how's this now? Ronnie calls this paradise, and for very good reason. I mean, have a look around. This campsite would have to go down as one of the best we've ever stayed at. We've had a ripper of a day. We've got into camp early today, and I think this really sums it up. Paradise is the name of the game. It's also the theme of tonight's cook-up. I'm gonna to do a bit of uh, paradise chili curry chicken. That's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? Now, basically, we come to that stage of the trip where we're sort of running low on a lot of different key ingredients. Um, Graham's found a couple of key ingredients right now. Mate, thank you very much. Look, a lot of tins, you know, on this trip. We've got a lot of tins, we've got a lot of cryvac meat, all sorts of stuff. <laughs> Look at you go. <laughs> Hot to try, but... We need to get some chicken out. That we is, do. That is the main thing. Can if I look could, after that? If you, if you could jump into yeah. there. I'm going to get this going. We'll get a bit of heat going because we're going to fry the oh, chicken up Oh, that first. is a bag of chicken. Hot little tip for you. I actually wanted drumsticks, but I think we've got, I think they're breasts or thighs, one of the two. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to put that on. Are they breasts, bro? Are they breasts? Yeah. How do you know that? I just checked it out. Mine are about as close as you're going to get in this trip. <laughs> <laughs> they're tenderloins, actually. Okay, well, I'm not going to touch that on camera. That's... <laughs> <laughs> it's tenderloins. It's a bit of a lucky dip tonight. Hey, chef. That is from uh, lunch. <laughs> Don't show everyone that. What's that's going on there, chef? That's got a bit of sooty grunge on it. So, and look, it'll help. It'll help. It, I didn't wash up. I didn't wash up. We're going to brown it. We're yes, gonna, We're going to yes. brown off the chicken. There's a fair bit of chicken here. I'll look after that, So mate. it's a little bit frozen. I've been... Frozen? But, yeah, well, we had it out this morning to the defrost in the fridge, but the fridge keeps it so cool, it's not quite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's it's good enough. Here's a bizarre concept for you. We were talking about this last night around last night's campfire. Yep. What we could be the most remote people in Australia right now. Imagine that for a concept. I'd gone to bed by this stage, but yeah, I, oh, I yeah, reckon. Well, we got quite philosophical. Did you? Yeah. The night. yeah. I reckon My... you might be right, without a doubt. And here we are cooking a bit of paradise chicken. Paradise chicken, I hope I don't spew. 60 cans to Colombo Roo. <laughs> One thing is for sure, paradise chicken, you'll need to chew. 60 cans to Colombo Roo. <laughs> mate, that is starting to come together. There's a bit of heat in there now. Yeah, mate, this chicken looks good. How about right you? Up. 60 cans to Colombo Roo. <laughs> That's about the size of it. Well, right, a little bit of, uh, we've got a bit of curry powder, mate. First thing first, we're gonna dance a bit of curry powder around. Fair dance. bit. Dance? Yeah. That's I like how we, that. That's, that's how we do it in chef school, mate. That's just, some terminology right there. Just, this is the best thing about this. A lot of we've got curry powder. Usually you either go chili chicken or curry chicken. We're doing both. We're doing both. Brave. Have a go at this one here. This one here is the phantom. Now, trust me, I've brought a couple of sauces, and uh, some of them are absolutely diabolical. They 
Yeah, <laughs> they've been real hot. Look at that colour change. This one here is a little 8 out of 10. I, my nostrils burnt then. <laughs> but it's like literally a teaspoon would like kill a small human. Yeah, That's why I got out of the way. I'm a small human. I just want to tap that. Don't do that, don't do that. Does it, you want, no, like, you want like a teaspoon, like no more, or else dead set. People, people could be hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Two, oh, three. <laughs> it's going to be hot. Woo! It's going to be hot. How many cans, cans of Columbia? <laughs> right, that's going good, Woo! that's going good. I want to get some more bits and pieces out of here. Use coconut cream. Now I'm going to use two of these. But just put one in the start and basically get that heat high so the curry and the coconut just do their thing. Woo! Jump in the Mike Coleman. What do we got in here? Oh, a little bit of onion. Camper trailers just give you so oh, much luxury when you're out in the bush. So I'm just going to basically put the onion in. Chef, put, but normally, have... normally you'd fry the onions. I'm not. Is that what you're trying I'm to say? Casting normally. A... Yep. Okay. But, uh, tonight we're at Paradise. The camp is that good that no matter what you chuck in a pot, it's going to taste good. No matter what. Did you stuff up, Chef? I forgot about it. <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> with that. I forgot about that. This is the bit where you basically you chuck heaps of cans in. Another coconut cream. Let me do that. Oh, it's gone sideways. Just like you. Oh, too much pud. That's a shame. Yeah, we needed that. That is a shame. You can over that if you like. And uh, I'm going to get some diced tomato. Now, you'd normally not chuck a diced tomato with a bit of cur curry, but together they will go all right. Have any sweet time with that one, mate? Yeah, my wrist is not. Not like it used to be. No. Nah. When you get yellow and you get red mixing together. Well, it's not always good, bro. Trust me when I say that. It's not always good. I love this. You've got a light over the top so you can see what you're doing. You don't need head torches. Pop that there. What are you doing? Don't tell Rocket. No. Making a mess of his campsite. Have a look at all this. You've got storage space up here. We're not really utilising it right now because no. I don't oh, want to make ourselves at home. Oh, salt and pepper, though. Do you want to put was, something in there? That was earlier, but yeah, now we'll do. Okay. Basically, these are whole potatoes. They're, they're already basically cooked. That's a go. That's a go. Making a real, real go of this one. This is going to be one of those stews. Like everyone's going to be stoked. The higher you hold it, the more gourmet it becomes. It's simple as that. Simple right. as that. Look at the mess you're making. <laughs> it's going How to many be... people are you planning on feeding with that tonight? An army. <laughs> we'll have seconds oh, and put salt and pepper in my beer. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the things I love about doing a stew when you're out in the bush. Now you can just basically let that simmer. Yep. You turn that right down. That's in case you don't know what simmer means. It's right down. You got to turn it down. Heat less. Exactly right. It's like first gear, low range. You just want to chew oh. through that. Yep. Let that go. Maybe put the lid half on. I was going to need to talk to you about this one here, chef. That's the lid you cook the sooty grunder in. Exactly right. So we're going to use the other side of the lid tonight. Oh, just like and that's that. why I didn't go to chef school. <laughs> exactly right. Now I'm out. So we're going to have a couple of iron jacks. Sit down. Come back in about oh maybe half an hour. 45. 45 minutes. That'll just be one of the best tasting things you'll ever chuck in your mouth, mate. <laughs> 60 cans to Columbo Roo. <laughs> well, have a go at this. If you could only smell what I'm smelling right now. <laughs> smell that, mate. That's superb. <laughs> <laughs> smells... Call the boys in because we are on. on. You, take, we go. you take the reins, yeah, chef. I've got no idea what this is going to turn out like. Let me just warn you right now. Tim, you go first, mate, because who knows? My goodness. Who knows? <laughs> is there a cricket in there? Is there really? No, honestly, is... honestly, it's not very often you get a bit of spice and a bit of mm. curry mixed in together because it's oh, really one or two. That is amazing. Really? Seriously? Yeah, good. Oh. oh, my God. Well, that is hot. Right. That is hot, and I hope it's not for you, but 60 cans to Columbo Roo. <laughs> <laughs> that is Have superb, man. Have a go. There's a bit of spice, a bit of curry. There's a really lot, good. lot going on in that bowl. The Chicken. meal lives up to its name. It really does. It really does. It really does. Mm. You, you, you. Paradise, I hope you get here one day. Sean, I, this is a meal to remember, that brother. That is, Perfect. mate, absolutely dead right. How are we going to sit down over here? And, ah, yep. big time. Turn around, you big fella, you. Mm, that's so good. That moss is good. light, this little slice of paradise is looking pretty damn idyllic and I can't think of a better place you could wake up to. 
the Kimberley is one of those destinations you've just got to add to your bucket list. And to come out to a remote and untouched place like this, well, it's really what dreams are made of. And it sure helps having a rig built to take you there. Well, I'll tell you what, waking up in a spot like this, I say it all the time, but I really mean it here, it doesn't get much better. Now, I'm sure you folks have been eyeing off the big 79, I know I have. I'll make myself a cup of coffee. Head over there and see if Tim and Harry are up. Check out their setup. Timbo! Good morning, Mr. Cahill. How'd you sleep? Well, actually. Yeah, so did I. Hey, listen, don't want to let the cat out of the bag just yet. Yes. Looking at the new cars. Epic. And obviously, this thing has caught my eye. Yep. As a brand new vehicle, how's it all been done? What's the go? Mate, this isn't a new car. So we bought a second-hand car yeah. and did a builder. So we we're looking at new cars. We always had the option to get a new yeah. car, but yeah. we were like, let's buy a second-hand single-cab cruiser and, and, and build it up as a little touring weapon. You didn't tell me this was second-hand. I thought it was a brand new vehicle. Yeah, it's a second-hand. So, you've, so we, you've... Bought it, we bought it with a couple of hundred thousand Ks on it. Plopped one of our setups on the back of it. So this canopy you put on the back of this, is this your full-size canopy? This is the full-size for an actual dual-cab Land Cruiser. So, for a dual-cab? Yeah. Okay. So this would be the size you would have on a dual-cab. And we did that primarily on this trip so that we could use the dual-cab size yep. and see what it felt like and see how it worked and how the, all the internals functioned when you were living sense. out of it for 15, yep. 16 days in the scrub. And how many sizes are there in the range? There's about five all okay. up. And that takes you all the way through to single cab size trays. Yep. So if you've got a dual cab, but you, say on a dual cab, you can have a shorter little like dog box yep. locker style one. Yep. You go through to what's on your size and then you go up to this space cab and then the single cab. Gotcha. And they all have unique layouts to suit as well so and you still kept obviously the modular layout and all of these yeah all the modular stuff we've yep. been continually updating and designing it taking a lot of weight out of it which yep. we're, we're trying to do all the time you know especially with internal layouts uh, the good thing now is we're playing with the floors being flatter so you can bolt the accessories like the clear view slides and everything directly to the floor of the canopy so basically mate what you're saying is you purchased a second hand vehicle mm -hmm. you've kitted all this out yep driving the most remote track in australia for around about the cost of a new car. Yeah, 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 absolutely. We, so we did a whole build-up series on our YouTube channel mm -hmm. and it's got all the facts and figures, all the cost. We're full retail priced, the whole thing with our train canopy. It's got a big, big electrical system in oh, there as yeah. well. So yeah, if you want to know more, there's heaps on that on that video series. As far as I'm concerned, the proof is in the pudding because you've been leading a lot of this too. Yeah. Uh, you put it through a spaces, everything kitted out. You probably never need to buy another car. No, I, I really love this car, I'm going to yeah. be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never understood the 79 thing, and now I 100% get it out here with the truck. Well, mate, you know, that does wash off over time, oh, but don't worry about it. I still like I you, mate. I, I still like you. Yeah, I get it now. All right, I'm going to have some bricky, mate, but this has been a real opener for me. Uh, <laughs> I'm doing some research. Just leave it at that. All yep. right, just leave it at that. After checking our maps, we reckon we can make the Berkeley River by the end of the day. But still, we've got a lot of Ks to cover, so we've got to get moving. The crew are quickly swarming over the Maverick camper, making a coffee and a quick hot brekkie before Rocket finally manages to shoo everyone off and get packed up. At this point, we haven't been able to touch base with Ronnie, but we're all hoping that he'll soon be on the road and pushing in from the northern end of the track to meet us halfway. Well, I've got to say, that's going to be going down as one of the best campsites I've ever stayed at, and uh, I don't say that lightly. Crocs, great fishing, and a good time had by all. And uh, don't forget that uh, Paradise Stew. I can't believe no one mentioned that this morning. That doesn't bear mentioning, that one. Well, I think that was the hardest thing about Paradise. <laughs> mate, you last year, man. So, <laughs> still feeling the effect. <laughs> Even the grass is spikier. <laughs> Well, it's tough country, tough food, like that's what it's all about. Look, today folks, we have a big day in store. I mean, if we can get to the Berkeley, we'll be doing really well, but I'm a little bit concerned. You know, fuel is getting very low and um, the tyre situation isn't exactly ideal. No, mate, I'm, um, I don't even want to think about tyres. I'm not mentioning it. I'm not thinking about it. Just thinking about Berkeley. That's all I'm thinking about today. Fuel is definitely our number one concern at this point of the journey. We're less than halfway along the track and already we've used nearly two thirds of our fuel supplies. If Ronnie can't make it down the track from the northern end, we could be in real strife. 
and every suspicious crocky creek we come up upon is another barrier between us and that fuel supply. And I can tell you, you really don't want to get stranded out here. Oh, Man, I didn't have to run in after him on that one. That is so soft though. Wow, well, got through that. You just never know these crossings. How deep they are, could be bottomless pits. No idea, you sort of got to suck it and see. You don't want to walk them because of salt water crocodiles, so it makes the challenge just that little bit harder. I don't know if I got water in the snorkel or not, but everything went missing. You're right, young kid. Jesse does his best to stay out of those wheel ruts, but he's slipped in and the ruts have swallowed him up. He gives it another crack, but she's just a no-goer. Oh no. Yeah, boys, I'm not getting out of here by myself. <laughs> Uh, I'll come around and come down to you. The Mitz truck is once again to the rescue and soon enough, Jesse is back <laughs> on his feet. Thanks, Tim. Now look, we've lost count of the number of creeks and rivers on this track. Barely a kilometre goes by without some kind of crossing to navigate. We've got a real variety of rigs on this trip, from big customs to relatively stock utes and Jesse has been having an absolute blast in the Goodyear truck. Mate, that's what I was thinking to myself. You're sort of the quiet achiever down the back. Now, firstly, I was going to say that I'll put it down to, you know, you've been watching Graham and myself drive very carefully, and that's why you're picking some pretty good lines down the back there. But in all honesty, mate, you've got a pretty standard vehicle that's keeping up with all the big rigs. Yeah, look, I am learning a lot as I go from you, from you older ones at the front of the convoy, but yeah, pretty much standard car with a set of tyres, and. It's, it's doing really, really well. Those, the Duratrax you're running, um, I've got them on the 200 actually, and the 47 series, and they've just got, even though they're an all-terrain, they're quite an aggressive all-terrain, so they give you stacks of grip when you need it. Yeah, there's been no point in this trip where I thought I'd need more grip. They're, um, they even drive nice on the road. They're perfect for something like this, I reckon. Well, mate, we're not out of the woods just yet. Um, let's keep trucking along, and hopefully, we get a clear run like this for the rest of the track. That'd be good. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Sounds good. I don't know about that. Clear run is just not a phrase that works on this track. Before long, we're back in the thick of things and the track has once again disappeared into the grass around this creek. You've got this. Don't stop in this stuff. Oh. That's it! Tim's being a little cautious here, and rightly so, but soon he's found the best angle of approach. Glad that worked. Yeah. Man, that is soft. You could easily get a rig buried in there. Oh shoot, I should have waited at the top for your rocket. <laughs> I'm going to take a run up from about here. <laughs> well, good luck, mate. We can't wait to watch. We better get the hell out of the way, I think. There's cautious, and then there's rocket. <laughs> Send it, mate. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> roses. That's it. That'll do. <laughs> That'll do. No, it's going to be a Best big win. Wow, this is rocket. How are you feeling, big fella? <laughs> Oh, I'm feeling all right. Just a little bit careless. I just started to move sideways into these trees, so I just backed up completely. Yeah, good idea, mate. You're just resting up on the canopy a tiny bit, but hopefully you can winch yourself out of strife there. Rocket gave it a good crack, but that angle was just a bit too much. That's it. Lucky with the auto, I can actually sit there, look out, look at the tire, and just make sure I'm not spinning my wheels any faster than I'm actually moving, which is pretty good. Windows up. I reckon a little bit of sand's going to be spraying. Oh, 
she got a bit drifty. Oh, <laughs> sure no. What's going on here, mate? Come on, have another crack, but do it better, eh? There's bogged. And Shauno's well and truly I done that. Rick. Sunk real quick, mate. I thought I was making a bit of progress and she went right down. Yeah, it was um, creeping, creeping and just sunk. I think I found those holes from the camper trailer. Yeah, I think we might just chuck a couple of maxis in and then yeah, just give, go, yeah. give that a go, eh? Alright, let's give these max tracks a bit of a go. Lockers on, so. All the wheels grip. Just like that. Yes. Now, that's a bit of a hard act to follow, but I'm about to deliver a masterclass in sand driving. Well, I've got Graham coming up next. I'm going to keep the Max Tracks handy just in case. I've dug this up and put some massive holes. He'll be trying to come up probably on that virgin sand over there, but if he comes across, he's probably going to get bellied out. Give these a go. Fingers crossed, so. Eh? Mate, you just watch and learn. Point at the holes, send it up. Give it a bit. He's got it, he's got it. He's got it. The D-Max is powered on through. There you go, eh? Tell you what. After nine days on the track, collectively, we've gone through about nine spare tyres and plugged many more. And just a few k's from the Berkeley, my luck has finally run out. I've staked a tyre pretty badly and it's not repairable. And I've got no other tyre to replace it with. It's times like these, miles from anywhere and days from help, that you've got to start thinking outside the box. And the solution is a bit drastic. Jesse's four-wheel drive is running the same size tyres as mine, 33s but in the past it has run 35s, which gives us some options. Well, push has come to shove. We've had to do some pretty ridiculous kind of push mechanics here. We've taken the 235 spares off the back of the camera car. We're putting both those 35s on the back of the Ranger. Looks like a true Ranger now. She sticks out about 12 inches. Now I've got a spare. I've put the other Ranger tire on the D-Max and I've got a spare for the D-Max as well. We've got no more 35s left. So if we blow a 35, we're not going to talk about that. We're not going to talk about that. Plus, I think today's the hottest day we've had. It must be about 38, 40 degrees. So the boys are doing a really good job. We're just all banding together to make this happen. Sean and Tim have pushed on trying to forge that track through. Yeah, it's a real deal. Even though the 35s fit the vehicle, with the mismatch between the front and back, Jesse is going to have to stay more or less in two wheel drive for the rest of the trip. So it's going to be a hard road ahead, but at least we're able to push on. Well, that's a bit unorthodox, mate, but we are back in the game. That's the very first time I've ever seen anything done like we, what we've just done. But if it gets us out of here, mate, it'll uh, it'll work. We are still pretty desperately low on tyres, though. Man, I'm even worried about the toilet paper supply right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like COVID all over again, mate. But I think we just push on for today, get into camp, and uh, see how we go. I think that's about all we can do. The bush mechanic fix might have gotten us moving again, but it's come at a cost. Now we're truly on our last legs, with once again a vehicle stuck in two-wheel drive. No spare tyres and dwindling fuel supplies. At last though, battered, bruised and well after dark, we arrive at the Berkeley, the halfway point of the Umbulgari track. What greets us is another massive deep river crossing, but more concerning for now, there's no sign of Ronnie. Given the conditions we've seen so far, he could still be hundreds of kilometres away, and at this point, we honestly don't even know if we can make it out. Will we make it? Well, you'll just have to wait to find out. Next time on Four Wheel Drive 24-7, we take on the final leg of the Umbulgari track. The track gets denser, the rivers get wider, and then the worst happens. Oh, how did this happen? Running out of fuel, running out of tyres, running out of food. The breakages are stacking up. Go, son, go, get through it! The most remote part of Australia. 
Oh, she's deep, all right. No turning back. Failure is not an option. Don't miss the final chapter of this epic adventure. Coming soon to YouTube. Up next, it's the outtakes. But first, some of the gear we rely on in places like this. Well, mate, Berkeley River. Tell you what, it's probably not my pick of the campsites right now. We've well, had better. <laughs> we're She's right a bit on tired the track at the moment. And uh, look, I just want to take a second, mate. Yep. Uh, it's been an absolute epic adventure thus so far. So far. And I just wanted to go through some of the gear that we've used yep. to really make this trip possible. Absolutely. Because without good gear, yep. coming to places like this is almost impossible, mate. It makes it so much easier too to well, do. It does, yeah. it does. Why don't yep. you go first, mate? All right, You've... well, I haven't had to use them this part of the trip so far. Am I giving you any hints here? Fishing rod. Oh, <laughs> cheeky. I don't know. Cheeky. I've used that. It hasn't worked. <laughs> Unlike my clear views. Now, look, I have put clear views on all my four wheel drives. I've got them on the D Max. You're thinking, why is he talking about mirrors? Why is that so important? Trust me when I say, when you're in the tight country that we've been in through this trip, yeah. being able to negotiate backwards, see the guys behind you, get a better line and go again. Yeah. So uh, it's so hard to do with little dicky mirrors like you've got on there. Guess what? The first phone call I get when I get reception to Mike, to Mike from yeah. Clearview, <laughs> and uh, please, can we do some for a sixty yep. series? Because yep. I can't see an absolute thing. Just trying to. How many times do we have to reverse today? All the time. It happens all the time. And being able to see what's behind you—the trees, branches, guys behind you—safety as well. Yep. It's so good. And of course, these things can take a hit. Oh yeah. We've hit some trees yeah. at forty. Well, we haven't done forty k's now. What am I saying? But we've yeah. <laughs> hit some trees pretty darn hard. They just fold in. You pull them back out. You're good to go. So look, if you're going to make a really cool mod to your four-wheel drive, you've sort of got a bit of everything there and you're thinking, what can I do just to make towing easier, getting around easier, mm. grab yourself a set of clear. They've got lots of models too. Oh, Little every, compact every, ones, they've yeah. got the bigger ones. Yeah, for every four-wheel drive out there. Yeah, look, I want to start with tyres, mate, because yep. with me, I, I've been running the good years for some time now, and um, on a trip like this, you need to trust your tyres, because yep. tyres, as far as I'm concerned, one of the most important things that we'll check in every single day, and we're not out of the woods just yet, no. but I've got the confidence in my tyres that they're going to take me the distance. Of course, I'm running the Goodyear Kevlar sidewall um, MTRs, which got stacks of grip, but more importantly, I can trust them. They're really tough. Um, really strong sidewall. The camera car is running those, have not got one puncher yet, which is no. absolutely outstanding. Now, leading on to that, mate, I get a lot of questions about what wheels I'm running on the Dirty 30. Because you've got to mount them to something. Exactly right. <laughs> you've got to mount your tyres to something, mate, and I want to go for a set of wheels that don't just look good, but they're super tough as well. Now, the wheels I've chosen are the Dirty Life DC2s. Now, they're a full beadlock wheel. They're actually a racing-inspired wheel. They, they're proper you know, beadlock wheels. These aren't just for show. They've got a lot of go yep. about them. They're super tough. And what I like about it, I can let my tires down to super low pressures. I did that in the Durack River mm -hmm. way back when. That, that seems yep. like a lifetime ago now. Weeks ago. But, you know, I needed to make it through. So I needed all the traction I could get. And the last thing you want to be doing is going through a river crossing like that and rolling a bead oh, in the middle of a river crossing. Don't. You'd lose your vehicle. Simple yep. as that. So I wasn't taking any chances. I let those bad boys down to about 10 PSI yep. Yep. and just crawled through. And I know that these wheels are so strong. I've got big scuff marks on the ring yeah, now because I've, I've yep. hit so many rocks with them. Yep. But I don't really care because, you know, a few battle scars are going to look kind of cool and yep. I know that they're a tough wheel. They're not going to let me down. Especially tomorrow when we tackle that oh, bad I know, there's there. a lot of rocks in there. There's I a lot of rocks in there, so you'll be going first again. <laughs> yeah. Gives me confidence. So, folks, that's the gear, well, some of the gear we've used on this trip. It's not over yet, though. No, absolutely. Got, I like this bit. Few, well, we've got a few days to come yet, but we've also got... This bloke making a fool of himself and everyone else making and a fool of themselves. mostly him. I bet there's a couple of moments, folks. I don't reckon I'll come up at all. 40 degrees in the car. Yeah. Anyway, you'll see. Check it out. That's pluggable. Definitely pluggable. Most things are if you put enough effort in. Yeah. Because some things are worth it, others aren't. Yeah. When you're out in the bush and you've got nothing else, though, you, 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 you can try to plug anything. Is dancing with me. If anyone's ever stepped foot over there before, has anyone ever been there before? If you have, let me know. If you've stepped foot over there before, leave a note in the comments, please. <laughs> what do you think you drive, mate? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Big day, boys. What a Jerry. What a Jerry for washing the plate. What a Jerry for washing the plate, mate. Tough country out here. Where else are you going to get fuel? I'll tell you what. I'll throw away your dirty rag and wash your plate. Half a Jerry. Where else are you going to sell it to, mate? One third, mate. Well, I need it, you know. Look, Half a look, Jerry. Look, look at the line, mate. Look at the line. They're not waiting for it. You haven't asked any of the other options yet, mate. What about oh, the other options? Yeah, no. 
Day 5,632 of driving 5Ks an hour. This week on YouTube, <laughs> me and the boys say goodbye together. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious about the ice cream. If he forgets my ice cream, friendship's over. I wasn't joking about the ice cream either. <laughs> Whoever's watching this, this is a little reminder about when we got lost. We're lost at the river. We have nowhere to go. We can't see any tracks. You think 10 k's an hour wouldn't be much to ask, are you? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, no. I dropped it. <laughs> I dropped the other half. Oh, no. It's a yoke. Bye bye, Lady Matello. Six days on episode two, 60 bits to Columbaro. I love Jack and Nora and Stacey too. 60 beers to Columbia Roo. Oh, well. All right, ready? Yep. Mm, that tastes good. <laughs> all right. Far out, mate. Look all right? <laughs> Can I do it again? <laughs> Ooh, uh, mate, that. <laughs> Okay, 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 we got this. Go. Mm. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Hang on, wait. I just, put this, <laughs> I just put a piece of chicken up my nose. Can we start doing it again? Alright. <coughs> and we've got to leave, it's got to leave. All we've got to do is leave. Just be okay. like, just respond to Graham's statement, you know. It's got to leave. Okay. Okay. Three, two, one. Mate, you're absolutely yeah, dead yeah, yeah. right. So last night, I was down by the waterfall and I saw the Cahill in his natural environment. And I got a photo for you. It's a sight, it's a bloody sight. Have a go at it. I'll be uh, circulating that in the media soon.